an asteroid packing the power of 500 Hiroshima bombs could strike Earth. They're calling it the city killer. And NASA says right now this asteroid has a 3.1% chance of hitting our planet in the year 2032. So in spite of what seems like a small chance of impact, just last week, the risk was just 1.8%. So let's bring in Tarek Daly, a planetary scientist at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. Uh, Tarek, thank you so much for your time. All right, the chances right now, admittedly, are small of this thing hitting Earth. But they did increase by a percentage point in a matter of basically two days. So if the chances continue at that rate, we could be having a very different conversation in a few years. What are your thoughts about this? My thought is that right now, this asteroid poses a risk. It needs to be monitored, but it does not pose a threat that people need to be losing sleep over right now. Certainly, I'm not. The reason that this impact probability is changing is that at night, telescopes are observing this asteroid. And as they do so, they're measuring its position on the sky. By measuring the asteroid's position on the sky over many nights, they can start to build up that asteroid's path through space. And so with each new measurement on a different night, uh, you change your information about that path through space a little bit. And that's why that uncertainty is actually changing. Now, it seems counterintuitive, but what we expect to happen is that the impact probability may go up before it actually goes down to zero. And that's because there's a kind of an uncertainty region where the asteroid might be. And as that uncertainty region gets smaller, the Earth occupies more of that space. But once the uncertainties shrink enough, now Earth is no longer within that region. So right now, the most likely thing that will happen is the impact probability will drop to zero. But we are going to see this variation every night for the next, you know, up until maybe April um, as a result of these new observations that will be coming in from telescopes on the ground and eventually on telescopes in space. All right. So, Tarek, I will say you are calming me down a little bit uh, because when I did see that it increased by a percentage point in a matter of two days, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's, you know, it's low now, but if it keeps up at that rate. So your logic absolutely makes sense. What, were, what would happen potentially if this thing were to hit Earth? So if this object were to hit the Earth, it will depend on where it hits. Does it hit a city? Does it hit the ocean? As well as how big the asteroid is. So right now, the estimate is that this asteroid is between about 40 meters and 90 meters in size. That's about the same kind of size class as an object that exploded in the atmosphere back in 1908 over Tunguska in Siberia. Now, that event uh, flattened trees for on the order of 1,000 square kilometers, but it was over a not inhabited area, so there were no real consequences, say, to cities. Um, if this kind of event would have happened over, say, Manhattan or Vienna, the outcome could have been very different. One of the key things we need to understand better is the size of this object. And in March, the object will become observable by the James Webb Space Telescope which plans, in fact, to observe this asteroid. That's going to measure the size with a high degree of precision and accuracy. And once we know that size, we'll have a much better understanding of what the consequences could be if that asteroid were to hit the Earth. I want to emphasize this is not like a dinosaur-killing asteroid. That asteroid was the size of Mount Everest. We're talking something that, you know, on its largest end is the size of a football field, and that's at the large end. You're maybe looking at small end, more Olympic swimming pool size. So we're talking about something that, yes, if it hit a metropolitan area, would cause region localized devastation. It's not something to you know ignore, but people should not be thinking this is a civilization-ending event because most likely this asteroid will not hit the Earth, and if it does, it's not large enough to cause global devastation. All right, Tarek, as long as you are not losing sleep, we're not going to lose sleep either. Thank you for breaking all of that down. Tarek Daly from Johns Hopkins, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.